So we're going to study this. We're going to enter our souls into this text here, okay, as we're entering into the realm of what we call God's creation, okay? And we're understanding it starting from as he started in chapter 1. Chapter 1, he brought a passage in the Zohar in the very beginning. There was a weird cryptic statement that brought down in the ancient text of the Zohar by Shimon Bar Yochai that said, Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, His Lord is one. That's what's called Yichud Ilah, higher level unity. What did he translate it here? Higher level unity. There you go. Right there in the text, chapter 7. Okay? I'm going to give you the with the above in mind. But first, the original, original, original statement was, this phrase that we say of, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, that's called upper, higher level unity. And then, in our prayers, we say, right after, Baruch Shem, Kavod, Mahuto, Le'olam Boed, we say it soft. Correct? Right? Are we all familiar with that practice? It's in the prayer books. We say it all the time. One is called upper level unity, and one is called lower level unity okay upper connection lower connection okay and it's like why first of all when you look in the Shema last week's Parsha okay last week's Parsha we had the paragraph of the Shema as we know in the book of Num in the book of Deuteronomy it's all one 36 day long farewell speech Moses is going over some of the very important points of the Torah and in last week's Parsha, he, Moshe, is saying to the children of Israel, Shema Israel, Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad. That's where we get it from. Where do you get it from? It comes from Deuteronomy. It's a passage in Deuteronomy. Last week's Parsha, Parsha, uh, we're in Akiv now. It was uh, Parsha Vethanan. Okay? And then it started off with, if you read the Parsha, it started off with, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your money. Okay? <laughs> Some people interpret that as money. You have to love God with all your heart, soul, and money. It's, people say might. That was the American translator. So we've got to change that one. <laughs> Some of those corporate guys. And we gotta, no. Might is, no. It's not true. Some people put their money before their souls. Yes. Okay. I'm thinking it over. <laughs> Chester. Okay. So, um, in any case, with all your might, which could also interpret as all your medot, or whatever God meads out to you, whatever he dishes to you, you got to still love God. Okay? And then we got the whole rest of the parshish. You'll teach them to dil diligently to your sons, right? And, but the thing is, it doesn't say in there what we say in a sitter. You understand? Baruch Shem Kavod is not in the, in the Parsha. It goes, Shema, hear, O Israel, Lord is our God, the Lord is one. And then it goes, love your, should love Hashem your God with all your heart, soul, and money. Okay? And might. The Ahavta et Hashem Elokecha b'chol levavacha b'chol nafshecha b'chol meodecha. Ba'yu adorim ha'elev and all the rest of it. Okay? Just the first paragraph. Yeah. Hero Israel doesn't say Baruch Shem. Who put that in and why? Okay? So we have in a tradition that the men of the great assembly, 120 elders, at the beginning, of, after the first exile, they came back from Babylon, the Babylonian exile, which lasted for 70 years, came back to the land of Israel, and they set up 120 elders to go ahead and set up how Klai Israel is going to behave, they made the sitter. They made the prayer books. Okay? Because they saw before that there wasn't any prayer books. You know that? Why wasn't there any prayer books before that? Alright? Do you ever think about that? Because they had a, a harder day to digest, so they didn't really need one. <laughs> it's like we had the connection. We felt the connection. We could pray all we prayed all the time. We did what was right. It came to us. It came through us. The intuition was there. The connection was there. When people fell out of connection, that's when I, that's what's when the rabbi says, "Okay, man, these guys don't know how to relate, so we have to have a self-help section, yeah. <laughs> yeah. starting with the sitter, 
Okay, this is what you say to God. Okay, this is how you got to meditate. This is what you got to think about. Okay. By the way, there was Rabbi Riskin who said if you if a person is you know let's say going to be stranded on a, on an island on a deserted island and he can only have two books, two books. He said this before. Only two books. What would they be? You can only have two books. He can't take three. Two books. What would they be? Okay. One of them would be your Shulchan Arach, Kitzer Shulchan Arach, your abridged code of law. You have to know what to do. And the other one would be a Siddur. Because most of the themes of Judaism are inside the Siddur. They put a lot of Psalms from King David, and most of Judaism, in terms of its thought, is in the Siddur, in the prayer book. So again, now going back here, where does Baruch Shem come from? Where does that line come from? Okay, we got the Anshe Knesset, the men of the Great Assembly put it in. Where does it come from? I mean, um, does anybody know? Originally. Where does such a praise, blessed be his name of his glorious kingdom the is forever and ever. The angels do say that. But where do we have in tradition that anybody down here said it? Oh, it goes, uh, point, I, there's a, a midrash which says it goes back to when Yaakov Avinu was going... Can you get Frank Sinatra on there? Come on, let's do some serious stuff. <laughs> Go on, sorry, don't worry, okay. ignore that. All right, was, was going to tell them what, exactly what would happen to them in the future. He lost the connection, he couldn't do it anymore. He got scared and said, Shema Yisrael, and they respond, and his sons responded, Baruch No, Shemur. kind of the opposite. Let me fill in the story. Okay, it was good. It was very good. You got the event. The event was correct. Okay. Here's, here's Yaakov Avinu. Jacob, he's El. Oh, he's they, they said Shema, and he responded. Right. Okay. So he, but he was going to reveal to them when the Mashiach was going to come. Yeah. The lights went out. All of a sudden, he went offline. It was, it was disconnected. His internet was disconnected. In other words, he lost his prophecy. And he says, why did my prophecy just suddenly black out on me? I was about to tell him everything that was going to happen in the end of days. Give him the whole juice, the whole rundown, play by play. And they were very excited to hear. Okay? Yes. And all of a sudden, psh, lights out. So he said, why did the lights go out? Probably because one of you is not with the program. Perhaps one of you is a defector. Right? Something there. There's some, one of you is a traitor. One of you is not with the program. And they all looked at each other and went in, in unanimous. They went to, they said, Hear, O Israel, because Yaakov is Israel, Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad. And his response was, Baruch Shem. He was able to say Baruch Shem out loud, him the only guy, dude. Yeah. We have to say it quietly all year long, except, except, for, except for Yom Kippur, because yeah. we're like the angels. Because you can't say a praise. On the angels level because the angels are gonna decide like you know diddly squat you can't give that kind of praise they'll beat the living daylights out of you okay and we bring the parable of if a person is in a hole in the in a prison and he's been there his whole life and he starts giving praises to the king he doesn't know any diddly squat with the praises of the king the, the guards are actually annoyed at this dude because he doesn't know what what the king does okay so, the same thing by us, you know? So, it's for us, we have to say it softly. But this question still is, is why is it there? Okay? So, the Zohar tells us there's something called a meditation of an upper unity, and there's a meditation of a Yehud literally means, you know, Yehuda, Ilah. Yehud is classically known as a meditation. Okay? That's how the Kabbalists always call it. Okay? So, but literally it means unity adjoining. Okay, so now, with the above in mind, let's start with chapter seven. With the above in mind, we may know we may now understand the statement in the Holy Zohar that the verse Shema Israel is a higher level unity, and Baruch Shem is lower level unity. Okay, and the Zohar also said for Vaed, the word Vaed is Echad through substitutions of letters. I tried to figure that out, and it's a little complicated. Okay, how Vaed. 
I got as far as the Ayin Dalid, but the Olive was a little complicated. I can maybe if you guys are anybody any uh, English grammar experts here, you know, I know some stuff. So maybe you can figure this out. I'm going to read this to you. Okay, I'm going to read it to you if I can find it. Okay, and I'm not on the right page. Um, it brings down that it's a, a, a letter which is a consonant. Okay, olive and vav can be switched. Because the initial letter of each word, aleph and vav, is a consonantal vowel. That is a consonant that can indicate a vowel sound, which don't know what that means. So, like echa, the aleph is technically a consonant. But it means there's a vowel there. What's a consonant? Consonant G. is it's something like where you are. G. It's a hard letter. Yeah, it's a hard it's letter, so not a yeah, soft in letter. Hebrew, let's see. Okay, time room. I, rem Hebrew, I don't remember my English from grade school. I'm trying to remember what they call it in Hebrew. In, let's see. Vowels are tenu ot. Consonants are something like itsu rim or itsu rot. Uh, okay. Yeah. Fine. There is a connection between them, and Shimon Bar Yochai therefore says the olive can be switched with a vav, and va'ed means one. So you have. Shema Yisrael Hashem Hashem Echad. The Echad is one, and Va'ed can be re reconfigured as also the, the 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 one. Okay, okay. But the point here is, what have we been talking about until now? Because that was the first line, the above in mind. The above in mind we mentioned last week. Okay, there's two forces that are existing that give us our existence. Okay, there's what's called God's kindness, His Chesed, His flow brings us into creation, ex nihilo, something from nothing, every moment. Mm -hmm. We are being created anew, something from nothing, every second. Right. Okay, let me turn on the AC here. Mm -hmm. I thought it was going to be cold, hot. Okay. Yeah, it should have been cold today. Isn't it the same idea, like a TV serial or something? And I was in a classroom, it's like mazel. You can't, in some places, in some, you can't, you can't change the higher level mazel. Okay, that's for our own destiny, but right now we're just going to figure out God's creation, and then we'll figure out us in relation to that. Right now, when we look about God, He created us. He's constantly creating us. He constantly wills us into creation. Okay? We look at it very much as if you take a ray of sunlight and put it back into the sun, it's completely nullified. Okay? That's one force of creation, the force that we exist. Mm -hmm. Now, there, because we say way back in Genesis, the first chapter, we say God uttered these ten statements. Those statements <coughs> constantly give every single thing its animation. <coughs> we take the letters and you have to reconfigure them through gematria and, and, and switching and other, other forms of permutations of letters. But everything is basically made up of God's utterances. Those letters give every single thing its constant animation. Those are what we call the spiritual roots of everything. Okay? In other words, your name is your spiritual root. Baal Shem Tov says you want to wake somebody up, you whisper his Hebrew name in his ear. Okay, worked with my Shana. Doesn't work with my Yoni. Okay? Yoni needs a little bit more force. Okay, but most Shana, Shana, Sarah, Shira. Okay? Right? You just whisper in their ear, all right? So the because this name of the person is their spiritual life force. So the Hebrew name, the Hebrew letters, the combination of those letters. That's your spiritual life force. If you were to really experience that spiritual life force, the letters you wouldn't be seeing yourself as a body anymore. Okay? You'd like 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 take a ray of sunlight and put it back in the sun. The sun is is light. So you're taking a ray of sunlight back in the sun, it doesn't exist, the ray of sunlight. So if we would experience our source, spiritual source, that utterance that God made, <coughs> right? Let there be Eliyahu, okay? Then you would you be letters Eliyahu but no body, you wouldn't be like, it would be nullified. Yeah. Nullified, okay? And then we have what we call the contraction, which God, so to speak, withdrew his light, or he hid, he hides himself 
in order to give us the appearance of an independent existence. So he hides himself, so to speak, with what we call the tsimsum or the contraction that seems to give us this independence existence. Okay? So what we said now last time, okay, that's way beyond our comprehension. We can't understand how God is hiding himself here, so to speak, but he is, okay? And therefore, we are experiencing us as different entities that go about our business, our daily experience, okay? But now this next step is, just before we, we're, we're going to go on, is you, the rule that we discussed was you can't hide yourself from yourself, right? If you don't have a kippah on your head and you want to make a bracha, you can't take your hand and put it on your head and say a bracha because it's part of you. So you can't cover yourself with yourself. God cannot cover himself with himself. It's not going to happen. You don't see me, do you? Right? You ever supposed to hide and go seek where the person is like, okay? Kids are great at that. They think they go like this and they're completely hidden from you. Right? They go like this and you, you don't, they think you don't see them just because they don't see you. It's interesting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, so really, God can't hide himself from himself. So in lieu of that, this existence that we're in, in God's point of view, we don't exist. We're completely nullified like a ray of sunlight back in the, in the sun. We don't exist. There is no, Tsim Tsum, contraction, and God's expansion are the same thing, right? All part of the same thing. It's us in view of ourselves. Somehow we're involved in this experience that we're experiencing ourselves in our daily experience, okay? So now we're going to understand with that idea, we're going to understand what he said now by Yihud Ila Yihud Tata. Now this clause, okay, is everybody with me? This, the cause, sorry, the cause, see my glasses, it's the small writing. The cause and reason for this tzimtzum and concealment that the Holy One, blessed be He, obscured and hid the life force of the world to make the world appear as an independently existing entity is as follows. Okay, what's the reason? So we have many reasons for creation. Okay? And this is the reason for God's concealment is this. It is known to all that the purpose of the creation of the world is for the sake of the revelation of his kingdom. May he be blessed. For there is no king without a nation. This is good stuff for Rosh Hashanah. As we know, the Avoda, the service of Rosh Hashanah that we're heading to in about six weeks from now, right, is all about Hamelech. It's all about God being the king. We make God the king. Okay? And what does that mean? It's a very strange concept. Okay? make God the king, okay, is a very limited kind of thing, especially what it says here. There's no kingdom, there's no king without a nation. Well, if you have, whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, what do you, uh, this is implying limitation here, severe limitation. You can't have a king, there's no such thing as a king without a people. What are you talking about? God is supposed to be totally unlimited. Yeah, and yet you know it's true that there's no such thing as a king. He could be a king, but he doesn't have a people. He ain't a king, right? He could put a crown on his head. He could tell you he's the king. But if you don't have a people, where's your nation? You ain't got nothing, right? So it's a big philosophical problem that people have brought down. How can you have a king? If you can't have a king without a nation, that means the king needs something. That means God needs a people. How can you say such a thing? God doesn't need anything. You hear the problem? You yes. hear the question? So I heard the answer from David, Rabbi David Gottlieb. Okay? Mm. Rabbi, what? I, I got some question there. Yes. <laughs> brilliant. Brilliant philosopher. Okay, brilliant. He said, basically, when it went up on God's mind to make it a world in order that he should be king in the world. In other words, once he decided, I want to make a world so I will be a king, and then there'll be a, a people, and then there'll be like a nation, right? Once he made that will to do that, mm -hmm. so then he lowered himself, so to speak, 
and therefore all the rules of being a king apply to him. He lowered himself to the point where the field, the playing field, the rules, and all of the rules of a king and a nation apply. Okay? Once he made that decision to be, to make a world for, for the sake of a kingship, so therefore all those rules apply. So really, technically, God does not need us. Okay? But in the level of creation that we're experiencing here, there is a king, and therefore a king needs a nation, so therefore a nation, so therefore we're in this relationship. It's a relationship kind of thing. Okay? It, to make God the king is very hard because we don't have a concept of a king. Right? We don't. Right? There's no concept of what a king really is. In movies, maybe, but it's always the, the, it's always the, uh, the wicked king. Not much of a, you know, I concept there, you know? Morocco has a king, I think. Don't go to England because that's just a figurehead, right? And then, you know, what, what else is there, you know? Saudi Who? Saudi, Saudi, Arabia. Saudi princes, but they're just, you know, they're not I kings. They made themselves uh, kings. I think Sweden king still Arthur. has a king. Hmm? I think Spain, Sweden still has a king. The, the, the usual definition of a king, as the, the Torah gives the definition, yeah. is they could kill you on the spot and there's no questions asked. Okay? Oh, what? Africa. Africa, anybody could kill anybody. There's no questions <laughs> yeah, the, 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 <laughs> you know? the closest yeah. thing, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but, but in any case, yeah. okay? The closest thing I ever heard, someone claimed that uh, the captain of a naval vessel is right. the last absolute monarch. Okay. And it's interesting because you're on a boat, you're stuck, and you yeah. better do what he says because yeah. he's got everybody else to go ahead and they'll throw you in the brig if you don't. Yeah. I got that. Okay. Well, you mutiny. Yeah, yeah, well, mutiny will throw you in the brig. <laughs> there should be some copies lying around. You want to give Panina those? Okay. Okay, so here we have a new insight into the purpose of creation. The purpose of creation is what? Bestow pleasure. Yeah, we know bestow pleasure. But here, right, we're, we're, we're fed something else, okay? That it is known that the purpose of creation of the world is for the sake of the revelation of his kingdom. Revelation of his kingdom is big. Revelation of his kingdom, okay? Revelation. So what do you say? When you say king, first of all, that's different than a dictator. Memshala is dictatorship. Melech is the people choose, okay? That's different, okay? People accept him as the king, as opposed to a dictator, not so acceptable. <laughs> right? We're stuck. Okay? That's not the situation. Okay? Even though Hashem dominates, He's everything, He's the bus driver, right? Still, we say when we make Him the king, is from our choice. Okay? So the purpose is really is for Hashem to reveal Himself. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's now, in the present, we're looking for Hashem's godliness and everything or at the end of our lives when Hashem says shows the painting he turns over the portrait and you go wow there's no way anybody could have done it better than that that is so awesome yeah. that you know in other words you don't right God is a masterpiece he's making a masterpiece all of creation is one huge masterpiece that we're all part partaking in okay so in that you say you're king can you imagine that are you following me in other words, yes. if you see how perfect God is totally orchestrating every single thing in creation, you're going, you're king. Yes, that's, by the way, that, yeah, that is, I, I was, someone was discussing what we knew when you say Ha-Melech on Yom and Narayim. The thing that came into my mind was the idea of the artist who is stepping back from the canva, the canvas. Oh, Halavai, we could do that. We really should well, do that every not, second. he's doing. Oh, the artist is stepping back from the yes. canvas. Okay, and gives us a glimpse. Maybe. Not even. Not even. Okay. Yeah, not even. We'd like to get a glimpse. Yeah. Instead of what we're getting is a little uh, chip. Right? We're one little... Uh... But, but what you just said is very similar to a YouTube video of where an artist is painting on a blue canvas, black, and then when he finishes all the black, Sounds like it's a negative style painting. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. interesting. The best, the best one is nice, like, I'd like to see that. Yeah, and then okay. there's an even better one where the, where the artist paints and you start seeing these 
blobs and stripes and things. You don't know what That's, it is. He turns it oh upside down, and you see a face. Okay, all of the same idea. Uh, yes. Don't ask. Don't show a fool in the middle of the artist painting. And we're all in the middle of the artist painting. We're all fools. Yes. Okay. Do we all have judgments about God and how God is running the show? The idea really is as, as us in our minds to get to a point where we, as if, and we're going to see that in a second, okay, yeah. as if we see the painting in its perfection and we say, you're king, okay? So here we have the idea of the, there is no king without a nation. I'm going back in the text here. The word am, nation, is related etymologically. <laughs> etymologically. Etymologically. Okay, thank you. To the word Omamut. Omamut means concealed or dimmed. They use the language of coals. Okay, Gechalim Omamut, like dimmed coals. Okay. Okay? It's a strange language of Am. You wouldn't think such a thing. Okay? Coal, no, 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 no. You're talking about coals that have been like um, dormant. Ah. Okay? They're 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 dimmed coals, okay? okay that's, that's where am comes from, the language of am. Well, wait a minute, how do you put that together? There's no king without a people. The language of am. When you think of am Yisrael, right? Am comes from this language of dimmed, okay? Well, Dormant think, coals, well, okay? If you've never seen like I don't know, I'm thinking about a fireplace when you. After you, if you turn off the gas, the flames die down, and there are still the things that are red hot, and so they glow, but you can see them individually, as opposed to when the gas is on and they're at full force, and it's all just one big fire, and you may not even be able to see... You don't see the fire? You see the fire, but you don't see the things that make it up. You don't no. see the... Well, yeah. All you see is light. Gichalim Omamut. That's where they lang the language is from. Coals that are dimmed. Whatever dimmed coals are. Yeah, is it after the barbecue? Maybe. Or yeah. is it, no, they, they, the coals were like a little yeah. quiet yeah. and then you need to <sighs> blow on them? Yeah. Huh? You yeah. need to blow on them. Yeah. Or before, it's the or coals before, that are waiting to be blowed on. Yeah, that's what, it, okay, that's what we're dealing with. Before the fire starts. Yeah, like right be before they start and you go. Oh, I got it. Go, so, so it's before the flame. Yeah. Before the, blow, the air, the wind. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Now, 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 put this concept together, folks. Am, um, people, mm -hmm. dormant, or dimmed, like dim, <laughs> smoldering. I love it. <laughs> okay, we got a new definition for nation. It means smoldering. Okay. Am <laughs> um, kadosh means smoldering holiness. Okay. Maybe it means the we what we were before. You say a dim coal. We haven't actually it's, caught the spark. Okay, okay. So when whatever it is, it's not on fire. Right. But wasn't Harkina and smoke was probably similar too? Like, yeah, but the, the am we're talking about the people, and we're giving it a language of omamut, which is concealed or dimmed. Okay, the fire is there, but it's concealed. Okay. For they are separate entities, distinct and distant from the level of the king. For even if the king had very many sons, the name kingdom would not apply to them, nor even to nobles alone. Only in a multitude of people is the glory of the king. Okay? Here you have to get into really your inner will. Okay? Here. Okay? Every single action, and we work on it. Okay? We always have to consider our motivations for the things that we do. And it always has going to tie into what he just tells us right now. Okay? In terms of revealing the kingship of God, okay, is our purpose. If you would ask your soul, if you could turn to your soul right now and say, what's your real desire? What's your, what do you really want? So the soul will tell you, I just want God to be revealed right here and now. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, King, uh, a Kurdish boy who came to Avram and says, what do you want? I'll give you anything. What do you want? 
Avram says, I don't want nothing. I want nothing. I want you here now for everybody, not just for me. Not you to hang out with me in the private tent and to heck with the world. Mm -mm. Avram Avinu is everybody should, should, should be experiencing. In other words, your kingship should be revealed. Meaning everybody should see, whoa, nobody could do it better than you. You are the king. Mm -hmm. You do the driving. I totally trust you. Okay? Like we always use the metaphor of you're in the bus. And all kinds of crazy stuff going on the bus. The bus driver stops the bus. He gets up. He takes somebody, one of your friends, off the bus. He throws them off the bus. And he keeps driving. And you're like, what did you just do? What was that about? We don't ask questions to the bus driver. Okay? God is the bus driver. He's doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Okay? Are you going to enjoy the ride? Or are you going to complain? Are you going to say, you're the bus driver. We trust you. <laughs> Okay? A purpose of every action we're doing in the inner thing, in the, our inner will should always be, I want God's glory to be here now. That's the greatest thing that I could ever want. And that's the, what the soul wants. And all of our learning Torah is about chiseling off all the other motivations. You know? All the other motivations should get you know, you know, either you, you shed them, get rid of them, whatever it is, to get to the inner core, okay? Going on, okay? The name in which indicates the attribute of his malchut, which is kingship, okay? If you look at it in the ten spherot, in the spherotic realm, we have ten illuminations, mm -hmm. all these qualities, ten attributes, right. and the lowest is called malchut, it's called kingship, Okay? That's where finally everybody's going to concede you're the king. Because nobody could do it better. You are the masterpiece. Okay, You are the, the master artist, the master chef. You know. So the name which indicates the attribute of Malchut, kingship, royalty, may he be blessed, is the name Adonut. Aleph, Dalet, Nun, and Yud. That is the name, actually, every time we say Hashem's name. We say the language of Adonut. We say Ado, right? We don't say Yud Kevav Ke as it is written. We have to say it a different way, right? Where did that come from? Okay, that is because every single thing that we're trying to do is we're trying to bring his kingship down to reveal his kingdom in the world. So we use the name of Adonut, for he is the Lord of the whole earth. In other words, that's the intention you have to have in mind. Every time you say Baruch, Ata, Ado, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And you use and you say the, the Adonut, you mm -hmm. say the name of God, you have to have an intention in mind. It's a meditation. And what it is, is Adon Hakol, mm -hmm. Master over everything. Yeah. Master over everything. Yeah. And that's what it means by Lord of the whole earth. Thus, it is this attribute and this name of Adonut and the attribute of Malchut, kingship, which bring into existence and sustain the world so that it should be as it is now. In other words, we're a, we're a kingdom, we're a people, and there is a king. A completely independent and separate entity and not absolutely nullified. For with the withdrawal of this attribute, if it were to happen, so to speak, turn the page, and this name, God forbid, the whole world would revert to its source in the word of God and the breath of his mouth and would be completely nullified there and the name world could not be applied to it at all. Okay? In other words, if this name, this attribute were not to be existence, existing at all, everything would go back to infinity. Everything, all the molecules would dissipate and it would be as if we don't exist because the purpose of this world is for God to be the king and we have to be the people. Okay? The term world going on, it's a strange word, world. Okay? The term world can be applied solely to that which possesses the dimensions of space and time. Space is referring to east, west, north, and south, upward and downward. And time is to past present, and future. Okay? That's that name. That's what it implies. The world. Olam. 
Actually, we know that what the word olam also means, okay? Right. Elam, which so means hidden. hidden, okay? So all these dimensions, space-time, have no relation to the holy supernal attributes, okay? There's no connection, even though the I saw in the Sefer Yitzhir seems to imply it, but what he's saying now these dimensions of space-time have no relation to the spiritual realm. Only concerning the attribute of his kingship, Malchut, may he be blessed, is it possible to say that he, may he be blessed, is the king above, without end, and below, without limit, and likewise in all four directions. Okay? Only through that, in other words, that attribute that we can relate to, can we understand the idea that there are four or six directions, and then God is in control of all those six directions. Actually, it brings down in the Shulchan Aruch that a, one of the meditations that a person does, which really originally I saw in Rabbi Avram Abu Lafia, who was really into some dynamic meditation beyond, yes. is that when a person says, Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echaz, and he elongates the Dalit, yes. he has to, he can move his head in the four directions, okay? The, 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 that in showing that God is king over all four directions, okay? Once again, it's accepting, don't forget the Shema, we have it in the Chumash, we saw it, it comes from Moshe Rabbeinu, he's talking to Israel. The mitzvah of saying the Shema is, in Hebrew, called Kabbalas Ol Malchut Shemaim, which means acceptance of the yoke of the kingdom of heaven. Once again, kingdom, okay? Kingdom of heaven. Acceptance, I accept, right? Yoke actually is Sanskrit. You know what yoke means? It's another Sanskrit word I remember, okay? Inside. What? Inside. It's like an egg, the yolk is in the inside. No, 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 no,
how to shave them with a few Mickey Yolks and it works. That's, and that's that awesome. I was going to say that because this enables the animal to be productive. Mm -hmm. This is going to enable a manifestation of a potential in the world. Mm -hmm. We can't bring our potential out unless we accept this yoke our real potential. You might think you're doing something, right? But you want to do the real thing. But that's and the point. When, when Adam was spoken to by God and do a work, do a toil, that's your job now. It's work. You know, so... True. Yeah. True. It, be, it doesn't have to be so hard. Okay? Okay? And it wasn't meant to be. Okay? But you're right. Working could be take many... Uh, Forms. Well, some people work with pleasure. And it should be for all of us. Praying. The, the intention for Adam was pray and do mitzvahs. That was supposed to be. You know, pray and do mitzvahs. Okay? Mm -hmm. And the, so the idea, though, for us is more like, you know, things are going to uh, come up. Issue, issues. Stuff happens. Are you going to accept it? That's accepting the yoke of the kingdom of heaven. You've got to accept it. Kabbalah, Omach, it comes from God. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, if we can master accepting Yisurim, the Ahava, you've reached your goal. Okay. Meaning, Yisurim means sufferings. If we can accept sufferings with love, boom. Boom. Okay, okay I can leave now. <laughs> okay? So it includes that also. Okay, when you accept the yoke of the kingdom of heaven, you have to accept that every single thing in your day, because you say it in the beginning of the day and you say it in the evening, morning and evening, right? So you say it before the day because you're creating a really an essence, a vortex, that God is all there is. And every single thing that is going to be through the course of your day is going to be God is all there is, meaning every single thing is coming from God. Every single thing. When you're walking down the street and you hear something, this guy screaming to this guy, right? Something about, did you remember your... Uh, da, da? And then you're like, why did I have to hear that? There's a message in there for you. Okay, according to the Baal Shem Tov. You got to really listen. Okay? That's acceptance of the kingdom of, of heaven. Okay, now going on. Okay? We're talking about space and time here. Okay? That the, the language of Malchut, we need a space and time. We need space time, okay, for us, okay? But really, we're going to see in a few lines from here, in relationship to God, space and time do not exist. There is no space and time by God. In the spiritual realm, there is no space. And in the spiritual realm, there is no God. And the spiritual realm is existing right here and now. No, 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 right, no God. No time. There's no space. There's no time. Okay? Right here and now, in the, in, the, in the realm that we are completely nullified in our source, God is all there is. There is no space and there is no time. Okay? It is all coming from this manifestation of God's kingship, his will, that there he should be a king and there should be a people. Okay? So only concerning his attribute of Malchut, may he be blessed, is it possible to say that he, may he be blessed, is king above without end? and below without limit, and likewise in all four directions. The same is true concerning the dimensions of time. As it is written, Hashem melech, Hashem malach, Hashem yimloch le'olam bo'ed. I can hardly say it in English, sorry. God reigns, God reigned, and God will reign. Hayah right? Thus the life force of space, and likewise of time, and their coming into being from nothingness, and their existence, as long as they shall exist, is from the attribute of his malchut, his kingship, okay? But not the other attributes. In other attributes, it doesn't exist. In the light of the Ein Sof, if you're looking at it from the top down, if you're looking at it from God's perspective, it doesn't exist, okay? And the same, and then also the name Adonut. We need it, though, because you know something? We're coming from finite consciousness. We're coming from finite reality. And we are taking baby steps, and we are in the process of waking up to infinity. And in the process, the first process level of waking up to infinity is you need stuff to hold on to. I need a time frame. I need past, present, future. Otherwise, I'll go crazy if everything's happening at the same time. I need also a space of 
physical space because otherwise I'll go crazy if everything is in the same space. Right. There is no space. So for us, in our limited perspective, in our limited level of consciousness, in the realm of the constriction that we're in, we have time and space, but it is all illusion. Okay? Now, since the attribute of his malchut, may he be blessed, is united with his essence, and we don't speak about God's essence and his being, as an absolute union in some way that we cannot fathom, Therefore, space and time are also completely nullified in relation, to, in relation to his essence and being, may be blessed as the light of the sun is nullified in the sun, just like we just said now. And this is the meaning of the intertwining of the letters of the name Adonut with the letters of the name Havaya. Okay, here's meditation number four. Actually, I was going to wait, but this is a, a big meditation that everybody has to know about, okay? Let's, let me get it. Let me hope. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Let's pick one of these is good. Anybody know? <laughs> ah, for Hashem. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You'll notice, and we talk about this all the time, if you go to a prayer book, and if you go to a sitter in any of the other synagogues, most other synagogues, not an uh, not a orthodox one, if you go to a conservative or reform synagogue or any one of those, you're going to see in the, in the prayer books, you're going to see two yud. Right? Yes. Is, is God's name. Mm-hmm. Why? Where do you get that from? Go ask your rabbi. Mm-hmm. Go ask him, right? Go and see what they say. I'm curious. They don't know. I doubt it. I really I doubt it. Yes, it is. An abbreviation of what? Yes, it is. You're very right. It is. And I was told that too when I was growing up. An abbreviation of what? God's name. Okay, I see. Yud, K, Vav, K. Okay. Why do I need two Yud? Why can't it be Yud, K? That sounds good. Abbreviation. You got two letters. We're good to go. Why you and you? Aha. Uh-huh. So we have two names of God. I'm going to write it like this with a dot in the middle because we, so, so you cannot write God's name unless we put a dot in the middle, right? Then we then it's not like putting the name together. So we have the name of Adanut, Aleph, Dalit, Nun, and Yud. Right. And then we have the name of Yud, and I put a K, and a Vav, and a K. Okay? Mm-hmm. This is one of the earliest and most basic meditations that you could do it all the time. Yeah. Okay? And the idea here is combining these two and we weave them together. In other words, we, we take the first Yud and then we pair it with Aleph. Okay? And then we'll take the next set, which is uh, A, we'll pair it with Dalit. Mm-hmm. And then we do the next pair, Nun, sorry, Vav, and we pair it with Nun. And then the next one, we take up the letter, last letter of Hashem's name, and we pair it with the Yud. So here you have the first letter, and the last letter, right, uh, is the Yud Yud. There's where you get your abbreviation from. So really, it's when every time you say, because you're saying, really, in essence, you're <coughs> saying one name of God, Adonut, and then you're, but you have to have an intention, a kavana, and picture the letters of Yud Kei Vav Kei. And really, the real way to do this is, okay, you'll be praying in synagogue for a little bit. Take time, one time. When you're saying, when you're in Shemona Esrei, the first blessing, and you're saying, Baruch Atah, and you come up with Hashem's name, just stop. Just stop. Mm -hmm. And just do this. If you can remember these letters, and you picture the letters in your mind, you know, and don't forget to breathe, because it's good to breathe. Yes. Okay? Okay? Well, really, what you do is you picture... Really, what they do is like this. The Kabbalists will write Hashem's name. And what they do is they elongate the last lane name and they put the Aleph Dalit in here. And then they'll do the Aleph Yud Aleph and then they'll string it together like this. Okay? In other words, first they picture Yud Kei Vav Kei and in the He gets expanded. The He gets expanded. And then they picture Aleph Dalit Nun Yun in the He itself. That's the feminine aspect of Yud Kei Vav Kei. And then what they do is then they weave Yud Aleph and they'll picture it in your mind Yud with Aleph, He with Dalid, Vav, Nun. And I do that all the time. And that is the most cosmic event that you are doing. You might not think it's doing anything. You're pushing buttons in the cosmic realm that is going to bleed Shefa, abundant blessing down into this world. You're smiling. <laughs> oh, sorry. 
Okay. Yeah, you I want to say something. Now you want to say something. What? I see there. Occasionally, I see a sitter where they have that. Where, I think like they put. I my sitterim have it. Yeah. I have. I have yeah, my. I that, you don't the sign the sitters the here. I want to. The pay is very large. Yes. Inside there, they have that. Right. Svardim sitter. It's it's a given. Yeah. It's the, you're born, they're born with it. The kid, the, the, the three-year-olds are, are used to it. They're totally with it. The problem is, though, they don't take the time to really do that thinking of thinking it out and meditating on the letters as they are. Okay? So that's the thing is to breathe. And you picture, because when you're doing that, you are uniting the Holy One, Blessed Be He, that's Yud Kei Vav Kei, with the Shechina, with the Divine Presence, the Aleph Dalet. The Aleph Dalet is the expression of God's kingship in this world, which is what we are involved in doing. Our inner will is God, your kingship here now. That's everything we want for everybody, for all of humanity. Everybody should see how amazingly, how unbelievably wondrous your acts are and that you are king. And that's the goal, okay? With this simple meditation in mind. Okay, let me just go a few more lines, I think. I don't know where we are here. Okay, this is the meaning of the intertwining of the letters of Adonut with the letters of the name Havaya. The name Havaya indicates that he transcends time. That is known, okay? Because you know the name yud Kei vav Kei spells out three words, right? Aya, Obe, and ye, okay, was, is, will be, okay, because yud kei vav kei, if you take the letters, you switch them out or switch, switch them around, you know, you this one you double, but basically, in the word yud, in yud kei vav kei, you have those three ideas, and that's what you also have to think about every time you say Hashem's name. Also, was, is, and will be, three, two basic meditations, Aleph Dalid, master over everything. You have to think about that too, aside from weaving the letters. Aleph Dalid, you think of master over everything, and was, is, and will be. But was, is, and will be is limited. That's time. God is beyond time. Okay, really, he's tamid bahove. He's always constantly present. There's no past, present, and future by God. He doesn't have time associated with him. Okay? He's above it. That's what it says here. Okay? That he transcends time for he was, is, and will be at the same instant. It's all now. As is explained in the Raya, Raya Mehemna, that is the book of the Zohar in Parshas Pinchas. And likewise, he is above space, for he continuously brings into existence all the dimensions of space everywhere, from the uppermost to the lowermost regions and in the four directions. Now, although he is supraspatial and supratemporal. Nevertheless, he is also found below in space and time. And that is, he unites with his attribute of Malchut, from which space and time are derived and come into existence. And this is Yehuda Tata. Yehuda Tata is the intertwining of the letters of the name Havaya with the Adanut. Okay? So we wanted to know, we only covered up until now, what is the Yehuda Tata. Yehuda Tata, which means the lower unification. And the lower unification really is represented by the second phrase of Baruch Shem, right? His essence and being, may he be blessed, which is called by the name of Ein Sof, completely fills the whole earth temporally and spatially in the heavens above and on the earth below, and in the four directions, all are equally permeated with the light of the Ein Sof, with the infinite, blessed be he, for he is on the earth below, exactly as in the heavens above. For all the heaven and earth are within the dimensions of space, which are completely nullified in the light of the Ein Sof, blessed be he, which clothes itself in it through the attribute of his kingship, his Malchut, that is united with him. May he be blessed. However, the attribute of his malchut is the attribute of tzimtzum, which, con which is concealment, to hide the light of the Ein Sof, blessed be he, so that the existence of time and space should not be completely nullified, and there will be no dimensions of time and space whatsoever, even for the lower worlds. Okay? In other words, we want the lower worlds to exist. We need them to exist. We need space-time. 
So basically, Yichud Tata, the lower level of unity, when we say Baruch Shem, we have to have in mind that all of our dimensions of space and time need to be here. We need them as our tools, but God is still running them. That's why Shema Yisrael is going to be your beyond space time realm, dimension, where you're going to take your soul. And then the lower uh, meditation of Baruch Shem, blessed be his name, his glorious kingdom, is what's called the lower level meditation, which is basically making all of the things that you are experiencing in space-time is all derived from him. Okay, we'll stop. So, the phrase, Yehuda Tata, I, I now... So, so somebody you went to school with? No, oh. it, it's actually in a Star Wars movie with the little uh, uh, teddy bear guys. Yoda? No, no, 